This song is called Wonderful Words of Life. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Wonderful words, beautiful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner, listen to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echoes the gospel call, wonderful words of life. It offers pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctified forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Wonderful words of life. Oh, yes. Beautiful words, wonderful words. And uh, this song was written in 1876. It was in the last two years of the guy's life that he only lived. This his name was uh, was a uh, Philip P. Bliss, B L I S S, just like Bliss, and um, he was associated with Dwight L. Moody and Ira Sankey back there in the 19th century. They were uh, they uh, he and his wife, uh, 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 brother Bliss, Philip B. P. Bliss, he and his wife were evangelists, traveling evangelists, and they went around preaching revivals and singing and everything, and he sang with our Sankey, and, uh, and when he preached, he sang, I believe, in Dwight L. Moody's, uh, some of his evangelistic meetings and everything, and, uh, but uh, he only lived to be 38 years old, you know, and so uh, the last two years of his life, you know, uh, he was only like 36 when he wrote this in 1876, and uh, he lived from, um, or he was only, well, let's see, he, oh, he lived from 1838 to, to, to 1876, which is, um, you know, 38 years. And so, well, wait a minute. According to that, well, let's see, according to that, it was in the last year of his life. Maybe it was that he... It might have been that he wrote it in 1874. I was thinking he, was, he had two years, last two years. Uh, he wrote it in, eight, I believe it was he wrote it in 1874, and and then it was put to music. Yeah, that's what it was. It was, he was written in 1874, and it was put to music in 1876. By, and I believe it was by Howard Sankey, probably. Um, and, uh, but, uh, it, it is also in the, it is, it is um, one of the, it's really one of the old, like they say, the old Baptist 100s. It was sung a lot in the Baptist church. Heard it a lot growing up and everything. But it's also in the United Methodist Church hymnal on page 600. 
uh, they always, <laughs> for some reason, they always list the uh, United Methodist hymnal page numbers. But the page number in the United Methodist hymnal is page 600. And the guy lived from 1838 to 1876. And uh, somewhere between 1874 and 1876 was when it was written. Okay, so then we will go on uh, to uh, the next song. is called Till the Storm Passes By. And this was written a little bit more, uh, more recently. Uh, and it was written by a, a well-known guy, uh, Let's see, uh, I'll come to him at the end of the song. I've got it. Okay, uh, but till the, till the storm, I believe it was 1958, yeah. Till the storm passes by. In the dark of the midnight, I have all hid my face. While the storm howls above me, and there's no hiding place. Mid the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever. From the sky, hold me fast, <coughs> let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. <coughs> Many times Satan whispered, there is no use to try. For there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise. Where the storms never darken the skies, till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the oh till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. <coughs> and then on the third verse, which a lot of them left out, when the long night has ended and the storms Come no more, let me stand in thy presence on the bright peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes anymore. Lord, may I dwell with thee when my, uh, in the night where the tempest, let's see. In that land where the tempest never comes, Lord, may I dwell in with thee when the storm passes by. And that was written by, uh, in, uh, by in 1958. Uh, it was, a, as some have referred to it, as a classic Mosey Lister. It was written by past. Pastor Mosey Lister, M-O-S-I-E-L-I-S-T-E-R, and it's been referred to as a classic Mosey, Mosey Lister. He wrote a lot of songs, and, uh, and of course, so did that other guy, Bliss. But this was 1958, um, and, uh, and of course, like a lot of the other songs, later on in the mid-60s to, to, to mid-70s or so, uh, the Gaithers, they took up and began to sing it and everything, you know, and 
<laughs> most all of the songs, you know, they, especially the ones that were written between 1950 and the, and, uh, and 1975, the, the Gaithers, uh, uh <laughs> just about all of them, uh, the really classic ones, they, they have their albums that has it on there. And, but they you know, I think they were one of the ones along with the rest of them that leaves out, they always leave out either the second verse, third verse, or if it has four verses, they leave out probably the second verse or one of those. And so they had only, they were only singing two of the verses. <laughs> and so I, I always end up having to look it up anyway. So, but, um, so, uh, Pastor Mosey Lister. Yeah. So that's who wrote that one. And this is, uh, till the storm passes by and boy, they, they make that, uh, the singers, everybody that's, uh, most all the singers make that sound so much more beautiful than what I did there. You know, it's, uh, you know, especially on that in dark of the midnight in the dark of the midnight. I have oft hidden my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder. Precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy head. Keep me safe till the storm passes by many times satan whispered there's no use to try for there's no end of sorrow there is no hope for by and by but i know thou art with me and tomorrow i'll rise where the storms Never darken the sky till the storm passes over and till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy head. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. When the long night has ended and the storms come no more, no, let me stand in thy presence on the bright, peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes lord may i dwell with thee when the storm passes by when the storm passes over till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky, hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Whoa, praise the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful song. Yes, Lord. And um, this song is called, Who Am I? You know. When I think of how he came so far from glory, came and dwelt among the lowly such as I, suffered shame and such disgrace 
on Mount Calvary took my place. Then I asked myself the question, who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray, not my will thine for? The answer I may never know Why he ever loved me so That to an old rugged cross He'd go for who am I? When I'm reminded of his words I'll leave you never if you'll be true, I'll give to you life forever. I know there is nothing I could have done to deserve God's only Son to fight my battles until they're won. For who am I? Who am I that a king would Bleed and die for who am I that he would pray, not my will thine for the answer I may never know why he ever loved me so that to an old rugged cross he'd go for who am I who am I and Who am I that he would pray? Not my will, and for the answer I may never know. Why he ever loved me so that to an old rugged cross he'd go for who am I? This next song is called. I saw the light, you know, of course, there at the cross there, where Jesus died, that's where we see the light, you know. I, I wondered so aimless, filled with the, all that sin, I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night, and praised the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I have traded the wrong for the right, and praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wondered along where is and fears I claim for my own. Then like the blind man, that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. So praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander and stray, for straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right, and praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Oh, Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Cause praise the Lord, I saw the light. All right. I guess that was written back in. I thought I looked it up at one time. It seemed like it was, might have been in the 30s or 40s, somewhere in there. Uh. I'll have to look that up later, uh, but it's been around a while, been around at least since the 50s for sure, and 30, I think, probably, probably, yeah, probably 30s and 40s, yeah, it's been around a long time, 
real standard or, you know, real well known. Everybody knows it. Every church knows it. Uh, and so the next, next song is, and a lot of country singers sing it. It's been sang from everybody from, uh, well, just all of them, uh, uh, from, uh, Let's see, what was that called? Skeeter Davis has been so sung from everybody from Skeeter Davis to Elvis Presley, everybody else. Uh, everybody has sang then all those uh, groups like the Oak Ridge Brothers and, and all those, and probably the Cut Wagon Gang also. So how, uh, this next song is called How Great Thou Art. Uh, you know, that's a, another classic, I would guess, probably 19... 50, 55, somewhere in there when it was written, uh, and uh, so forth. Let's see. Okay, that's all that song. Okay, uh, this is uh, How Great Thou Art. Oh, Lord my God, when I an awesome wonder behold the... Let's see. I'll start this over. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder. God, there it is. Okay, yeah, yeah I had, uh, had left that off because I thought I knew it. I did when I was the last time I wrote this. Uh, <laughs> uh, how great thou art. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder. Consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. <clears throat> then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, when through the woods and forest glades I wonder and hear the birds. Sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, and when I think. That God his son not sparing sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. <clears throat> on a cross, that on a cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come. Which shall of acclamation and take me home? What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration 
and there proclaim, my God, a great tower. Then sings my soul, my Savior, our God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. O Lord my God, when I lost some wonder, consider all the works thy hands have made. <coughs> I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, the brook I and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think, that God is son not sparing, sent him to die. I can scarce can take it all in. <clears throat> that on a cross, my burden gladly bearing, <laughs> he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. <clears throat> that was sung a lot by George Beverly Shea. And uh, I don't know if it was during... Uh, well, it was sometime during his time when it was written, but I don't know whether it was uh, at the same time he was singing it or it was slightly before that, you know. But somewhere around there, you're around the, uh, you know, uh, late 40s, early 50s or somewhere, and I think was when it was written. Could have been before. And so then uh, we will review this real quick. The first song I sang was Wonderful Words of Life. And I sang that because, uh, as the first song, because this is going to be our Bible lesson, our New Testament, a New Testament study in Mark. And we're now in Mark 7 and 11. We're going to start in Mark 11, 
7 Eleven. So I sang this song because we're going to be reading and studying the scripture. And so we're going to be reading the wonderful words of life. The, the, the Bible is the words of life. That the, the Bible, the entire Bible, that's uh, the wonderful words of life. That's the wonderful words of life. The Bible, you know, <laughs> the Holy Bible, the wonderful words of life. And so this says, sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see. And that's our quest. You know, we should always be pulling out this this Bible, you know, and uh, and going over it every day and, and trying to find more, uh, more of its beauty, more of its beauty see. And uh, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty. You know, Psalm 119 tells us a lot about that, about how beautiful the words, how beautiful, you know, like their honey to the lips and gold and all those other kind of ways that they describe them. The, the words, uh, you know, Proverbs mentions some of those things. And uh, <coughs> words of life and beauty teach me faith and duty. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And it is there we learn what the uh, in epistles of Paul and everything, what the duties of the Christians are to be and how they're to be and how they're act and all that kind of thing where he was describing that to the churches. And so he said, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Uh, I am the bread of life, you know, and, and uh, uh, a man liveth by every word of, of by, uh, by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God and so forth that Jesus said, Christ, the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life. Center list to the loving call, wonderful words of life, you know, that's coming, all so freely given, all of this, you know, was all so freely given, you know, I mean, it was all, you know, bought with a price <clears throat> by uh, Jesus, and then, you know, by the, and then the apostles and prophets and everything, and those down through the centuries shed their blood and died to maintain this Bible and make sure it got to us. But as far as we are concerned, who have received it, it has come to us freely. It was freely given to us. Freely, many people died in order that it would be, it would be freely given to us. And so we should take that and, and look upon that as something that is highly, highly, highly precious. Highly, highly precious because of the price it was paid in many ways and over the centuries to give it to us. But the wonderful words of life also freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. And uh, so within that Bible, it says, sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all. Wonderful words of life. Uh, all that's found within the Bible, and all that's brought out in sermons that teach the Bible and talk about the Bible and preach texts on the Bible. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Uh, Jesus, only Savior. Yeah. Uh, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. And then the next song was called Till the Storm Passes By, you know. You know, kind of had a star, storm pass there a little bit for a few minutes yesterday. And then we had a little bit just just kind of some stuff just trying to come now. But it's just kind of <laughs> it passes over before it ever does anything. <laughs> it just starts, you know, and then it never, you know. And so uh, uh, but <laughs> I'm kind of watching for that. But it looks like it's going to just all blow over. But uh, till the south storm passes by in the dark of the of the midnight I have oft hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place and of course this is a metaphor you know mainly you know it may be talking about because we do pray when we storms come across we pray for safety and all that we get in touch with God <laughs> most of the time we get in touch with him really quick if it's a bad storm and uh, we do pray about that and everything but the main thing you know uh, you know it's mentioning 
is you know can refer to that too but the main thing he's referring to is metaphorically speaking is like when those storms come into our life you know like problems that we can't seem to overcome or or things that happen all of a sudden or or something you know or uh maybe if the storm actually tears up a bunch of stuff you know or something like that and then we have to uh have to uh rebuild and all that kind of thing like that you know well you know it's uh uh, different storms of life of all different kinds you know that can come into our life and so we're praying that god will keep us safe through that you know and preserve us and our family and all like that through any kind of either literal physical storm or any spiritual storm you know you have problems with the kids or whatever happens you know that we'll be safe through that and we'll be carried through that and our family will come to it intact and all make it heaven and so forth and so it's uh uh he keeps us safe in the in the dark of the midnight where everything looked black everything looked black whether it is actual midnight or whether most of the time at actual midnight that's just when you start really feeling good <laughs> you, know, uh, you work up to it all day and then you you about midnight you're really feeling good you want to stay up the rest of the night to the three o'clock in the morning then you can't get up the next day you know and so uh, it's uh i don't know some people might uh, think about well it's dark at midnight oh wow woo 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 not <laughs> never bothered by that I'm never bothered by that you know uh, with Jesus every time of day is the same and all of it is precious but many times as I say you get, get to feeling really good about midnight and hate to go to bed <laughs> and so uh, and uh, usually it's always dark at midnight unless it's uh, you know moonlight or something like that and, and then, you, then you want to go outside and stand and get her out, out there sitting under the moonlight you know or a, or a nice starry night you know and so that's beautiful and uh, but he says in the dark of the midnight i have oft hid my face you know this is those midnight times when there's storms coming across also my face i often hid my face while the storm hurls above me and there's no hiding place and so it's like that the storms of life come like that and you think well there's no way i can help in this storm i gotta go through it and and how am i going to get through it oh how am i going to get through it you know and it always seems a whole lot worse, you know, when the Lord really helps you get through it all, and you come through it a lot better than what you think you're going to. And so he says, uh, at that time, I will pray uh, amid the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry. Keep me safe till that storm passes by, you know. I mean, it could be the whole your whole life, you know. It keep me safe through my whole life, you know, until the storm of life passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, you know, until we come to that glory shore, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of of thy hand. And of course, he says, "I no man can take you out, pluck you out of my father's hand. Let me stand in the hollow of thy hand." Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispers, though, during those times. He said, oh, there's no use. There's no way you're not going to make it through. This is just going to be, this is just going to be the end of you. Like some people say, this is going to be the death of me. <laughs> or this is going to be the end of me or something. You know, I can't make it through. Too many storms, too many things going on and everything. But he says, you know, you don't let Satan tell you those things. For there's, don't let him tell you. Uh, not to try for there's no end of sorrow there's no hope by and by many times tell, Satan tells us there's no need to try for there's no end of sorrow or no hope by and by but that is of course blatantly wrong and when you're thinking of that you can know your thoughts are in the wrong track and it's the evidence that you hadn't read enough of the scripture and you hadn't done enough praying through and all like that because God tells us you know not to believe that type of thing from Satan it says, but I know thou wilt, thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise. You know, and so here he is talking about your entire life. You know, you, God's going to be with us, and then j just a few days that we're going to rise and be with him, where the storms never, where the, well, where the storms never darken the skies. Yeah, where the storms never darken the skies till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more keep me safe till the storm let's see till the thunder sounds no more till the 
clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast. Let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. When the long night has ended and the storm is come, the storms come no more. Let me stand in thy presence on the bright, peaceful shore. In that land where the tempest never again is going to come. And Lord, may I dwell with thee when, when the storm Okay, in the land where the tempest, how is that going? In that land where the tempest never comes, Lord, may I dwell with thee where the storm never comes again. I, something about that should be when the storm, or after the storm. Lord, oh, that's what it is. Uh, okay, it says, in that land where the tempest never comes, Lord, may, let, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. You know, right there, for clearly, for clearly there is pointing to your life. When the storm of your life passes by, you'll dwell with God there uh, on that heavenly shore where the no storm darkens the sky. And that was written, as I said, by Pastor Mosey, uh, M-O-S-I-E, I guess short for Moses, Mosey Lister. In uh, 1958. 1958. Okay, so, and then we, uh, all right, so the next song was uh, Who Am I? No, 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 that wasn't. Is that right? Have I already done two, both songs? Uh, yeah, okay, the next song was who am I? When I think of when I think of how he came so far from glory, came and dwelt among the lowly such as I, suffered shame and such disgrace on Mount uh, Calvary, took my place. Then I asked myself the question, Who am I? You know. Uh, that's like, you know, we was asking that question about realizing that we are the much loved child of God and uh, understanding that God loves us as his very own son. And and uh, and then we we, we we grow to realize that we understand that we are uh, in his eyes much more loved than we originally thought of, because he's having to ask, the author of this having to ask the question, who am I that Jesus would die for? And. And why would God love me that much and everything? A worm such as I am. Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? We have to ask ourselves that question until we understand it, what, why it is, and because, because of the love of God. When, uh, uh, wh who am I that he would pray not will my will done for? The answer, I may never know the complete, you know, we may never know the full degree of God's love. Or you may not even know, you may never uh, know anything about it but you may never know the completeness of God's love uh, that he would do that but says when I'm reminded of his words I'll leave you never you know and uh, and then it, and at first you know that confuses even more because then you say well why would he say something like that and because it's again because of his love for us as his very own son if you'll be true I'll give to you life forever I know there's no nothing I could the, uh, do have done to deserve God's only Son, fight my battles until they won. Who am I? So that's you know by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, and that points to the gift of God to save you, and then it's out of His love that He does that. And so uh, I'm going to make sure and give enough time to do a real good job on the lessons because uh, uh, and uh, says. Um, the next one was was a. Uh, I saw, I saw the light. I wondered so aimlessly, life filled with sin, then I, uh, I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I wondered so aimless, life filled with sin, I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night, and praise the Lord, I saw the light. Uh, I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. I think I forgot. To put that dear Savior in, 
a stranger in the night praise the lord i saw the light you know and so no when, when you see that light then there's no more darkness and no more in that you know that dark of the midnight we was talking about on the last song you know there's no more of that because you've seen the light and so happy i saw no sorrow in sight just like a blind man i wondered along where worries and fears were I claim for my own, you know, that was all he had. That's all you have to live for. I mean, that's all you have on your life. You know, that they're your friends and your worries and your frets and your your regrets and your anxieties and all that. that you, you just live with those and claim, then, you know, you don't think you can even get rid of them, but you find out, you see the light, you find out you can get rid of all those. So then like a blind man, that God came back in sight, praise the Lord, I, I saw the light. I was a fool, a wanderer away and a stranger, for straight is the gate and there is the way. Now I've traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. And so, still got a little bit of time. Uh, how, and then the next one was that beautiful song called How Great Thy Art, which was sang a lot, many times by George Beverly Shea. I need to look up the history of that and find out if he, uh, if it was written during that. It was probably written, it was written during his lifetime for sure, but written uh, uh, where it was like a late, uh, 40s early 50s or when it was actually actually written and who actually wrote it uh, i'm pretty sure that wasn't the gaithers that wrote that because i think it was before they began to write songs uh and so it says how great thou art oh lord my god when i in awesome wonder uh, uh consider all the works thy hands have made i see the stars i see the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe was uh, throughout the universe displayed and then uh this beautiful verse that says um uh, when through the woods and forest glades i wonder you know we can all identify with that when through the woods and forest glades i wonder <clears throat> and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees when i look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook <laughs> and i was wondering if it was a mountain or i wonder how high that mountain was that he that he heard it all the way down to the brook unless it was a mountain brook <laughs> but he says uh, from lofty mountain grandeur could be echoing too through there uh, just could have made it amplified it uh from the lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze and sings my soul, my Savior God to me, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, again, like that other song, Who Am I? His son not sparing. All of this points to the love of God and the grace of God. And we have to raise our understanding and our consciousness and everything to realize how greatly God loves us and how great his grace was because of all these things that, you know, we, who am I that he would give his son? And this again says uh, that his son not sparing sent him to die. I scarce can take it all. We can't take it all in. We can't take that love beyond degree, that that um, awesome pity, that um, uh, matchless pity and, 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 and grace, uh, unknown love beyond degree. We just can't take it in. But it says, uh, take it in. Uh, I scarce can take it in that on a cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. All that just to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, how great thou art. And, he, and that is correct. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. And... Uh, so, and so that's, that's a marvelous, 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 marvelous song. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. So now it is time for our Bible lesson uh, in Mark 7, starting in verse 11. Our uh, uh, New Testament exposition, the exposition of the New Testament going through the through the new testament and we did matthew and now we're up to chapter seven in, in mark i can't believe we've come along this far we're we're plodding although we're plodding kind of slow really but uh we've gotten to where i've been able to get a whole chapter each time and and we're plodding slow but when we're but we're plowing nice deep and low but we're plowing straight to the gate 
of heaven. We're going to keep those roads straight. We're going to keep plowing them deep. Take the time. Take the time to plow them deep enough, not just to run across it superficially. We're going to get, make a good row, a good row that'll last until we can get the seed out there and plant and everything like that. You know, a good row. Maybe let the sun shine a little, a little bit at right way, or maybe a little rain or something, and then go out and put the seeds in that row. Have a deep enough row, a good enough row, you know, that everything will work. And and so we're doing that. We're plowing that, you know, right that correctly. And even though it, we have to plow it slow sometimes to do that, we don't want to go through it too fast. And so anyway, so we're starting in, and this is uh, okay, exactly right. 50, 50, 50 uh, minutes, right at fifty minutes. 50, oh, oh, 51, 10, 1, 5, so on. We're starting in Matthew, uh, Matthew 7, 14. And uh, my King James clipboard again. I looked that up in the Bible and wrote down the verse and everything like that. And I had it on my mind to get that clipboard over here. And I did not get it over here. No telling, no telling where it is, but I have this one, so I may just turn to it. Uh, it'll be just as good. Uh, let's see, Mark chapter 7, if I can find Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, here we go. Mark chapter 7, verse Mark chapter 7, verse 12. Okay, we'll start there. Mark, Mark chapter... Mark chapter 7, verse 11. Well, he says, figure out why. Okay, here we are. Mark chapter 7. All right. And so it says, um, but ye, uh, we left off there at 10, it says, for Moses said, he, uh, said, honor thy father and thy mother, and who's, uh, and, uh, So cursed and uh, who so curses father or mother, let uh, let uh, him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father and mother, it is carbon, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. He shall be free, and ye suffer him no more to the uh, to do aught for his father and the mother. You know, so that just they just figured out everything like that that they didn't want to do. That was in the Ten Commandments. They just kept, uh, you know, and they and they pride themselves in keeping the law, but everything in the Ten Commandments they'd always find some way around doing that, and they'd always come up with all these other ways of, of uh, other exceptions that would cause him to be able to uh, get around that law, you know, and, and they needed to, one of the things Jesus needed them to do, you know, among everything else, as well as, you know, seeing that he was the Messiah, and everything, was to go back and see what the Ten Commandments and all them things that God originally gave them really meant, and, and uh, 
and be able to see through all those traditions and all those new laws they had created to get around all the all the things that God had first uh, told them. And so, let me see if I can find that clipboard. It would be so much easier. Uh, let me see. Let me just. Okay, we will start this over so I can time stamp it for 55 minutes. And uh, we, uh, this is our exposition of the New Testament, and we are now in the in the book of Mark, Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter seven, verse eleven. And I am the chief expositor, so I'm going to expose it to the best of my ability, and I'm going to pray. Father, I just pray you bless the reading of thy word now and the study of thy word, and give us a great understanding, and give us a great light based upon thy word. Let us eat the bread, the, the, the words of life, and, and the bread of life through thy word. And Lord, just touch this reading and this study of this word, and bless it to our hearts. Now I pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Amen, amen. And we're, uh, we're plowing, plowing sl slow through the New Testament. And uh, we're going to plow slow, but we're going to plow good. We're going to make good roads. And we're going to plow straight till we get to the gate. And so uh, Mark chapter 7, 11. But ye say, if a man. Uh, okay, so we were talking about honoring thy father and mother. Moses said, blessed, uh, said, honor thy father and the mother and whosoever. Uh, Cometh father and curses father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is a uh, a carbon, that is to say, a gift by whosoever thou mightest be profited by, may he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more the to do all for his father or his mother making the word of God of none effect through your traditions which ye have delivered uh, and uh, many with the things of ye um uh, which ye have delivered, the, your traditions that you've brought thought up and everything. Many of those uh, such the things that ye uh, do. And, uh, and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me every one of you, and understand there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him but the things which come out of him these are the things which defile the man you know and uh, of course they you know they were instead of obeying the ten commandments the way they were intended and the way they were written you know <laughs> we're having some experience of that today you know in politics you know, instead of obeying the constitution that is written you know they uh, and so on, but instead of them obeying the uh, the Ten Commandments and the things that God gave them, uh, they are figuring out ways to get around all of the, you know, uh, the real intent of the Ten Commandments by coming up with these extra rules that, well, you can, you can say it's a gift and all them kinds of things. And so they get around honoring their father and their mother by writing a new law that undercuts the original law. And uh, so he was saying, that's not going to work. You're going to have to honor your father and your mother uh, in every way, taking care of them and everything else. And so it says, uh, and then he goes on and he says, um, uh, he's talking about that. Um, let's see. Well, okay. So that, then he goes and he moves on from that. And he's talking about, uh, what's he talking about? Uh, there is nothing from without a man that can defile a man, but that was come. And so then he goes ahead and says, uh, about concerning those things that, uh, such as uh, not eating this or eating this or not eating that, all those laws like that, he said, that they'd come up with. He said there's nothing, 
uh, nothing like that that can defile a person, but it is the things which come out of their mouth, being the abundance of their heart and what's on their heart and all like that. That is the true defilement. The true defilement, they had all kind of laws about this defiles and this this doesn't and this defiles and all, but the thing that really defiles a person is what is on their heart and what comes out of their mouth, therefore. And so, <laughs> he said, um, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the uh, people, he, um, the disciples asked him, you know, he entered that house away from the people, the disciples asked him concerning the uh, parable, and he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding uh, still or uh, also? Do ye not perceive that who whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not unto his heart. Woo, boy, he's laying it out there, but unto the, but into the belly, <laughs> and, and, and goeth out into the drought, uh, purgeth, purging all, wait a minute, going out into the drought, purging all, Meat, and so the meat's not going to defile. Yes, what comes out? And he said, "Thou uh, that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man." You know, and that's a, you know, that's just spiritually speaking. You know, what really defiles in the way that they were making it seem like, according that it was like a, a religious tenet, a, a religious ordinance, or whatever, to not eat certain things. You know. Now you do have to be careful what you eat in the sense of the when you turn away from the you turn into the physical, natural, practical consideration. Of course, we have to determine what kind of meat we're going to eat. Eat good meat if you're going to eat it and not eat it too often, and and all those kinds of things. Don't overwork the colon and all them other kinds of things. You know that we have to understand. But that hadn't got anything to do with the defiling that they were talking about. They were talking about how they were. And so uh, how they would were actually would actually be a sin to eat certain things, you know, certain types of things, and that that would defile a person, and not recognizing that what really defiles them was what was actually on their heart, you know, like he said, within your heart is a, like a uh, uh, inside of you, you 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 paint over the outside, but inside it's like an open sepulcher. You know, and he said that many times, and and so they were hypocrite in their heart because they were thinking because they were observing all these things which had been made up by other people down through the centuries that and for them to observe, and they were were keeping all those lo, lo, man-made laws and everything. That therefore they were holy and, and acceptable, and everything else was right. You know, not and not even you know spent so much time thinking about how to keep all those, and never even thought about their own heart and their own soul, and getting that pure and letting be like the, Jesus said, the pure in the heart will see God. They never thought anything about that part of it. So uh, Jesus laying it out there, he said, hey, that goes to the that goes down to the stomach and then on out, you know, or and that doesn't go into the heart, you know. That goes into the intestines. <laughs> and so he says, um, and of course the heart he's talking about is, is the, you know, the, uh, that which, you know, is your totality of your spiritual awareness and your soul and all that kind of thing. For, uh, and he, uh, that which, is for thou, far from within out of the heart of man proceedeth evil thoughts adulteries fornication and murders thefts covetousness with uh with a uh, okay covetousness wickedness deceit Blasphemies uh, and uh, 
an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, uh, foolishness, and all those things. All those things come out of, you know, and you, you're saying, look at all these things that people have on their heart and what, and how it comes out in their in their mouth and what they say and all that kind of, and the way they look and their evil eye and all them other kinds of things that it causes and all that kind of thing. And look how much worse, how much more terrible and, and nasty and evil and everything else that is than just eating something that was not on that prescribed list which they had made up. You know, how much more evil all those things are. And so he said, spend more time thinking about how to get rid of those kinds of things and get more love on your heart and all like that than you do about, you know, uh, what particular, uh, you know, having, having a laws against eating certain type of uh, types of things and calling that a defilement and then saying like they would say you, you can't associate with people who are defiled and but just simply because they eat certain thing well they were defiled and so they wouldn't associate with them and Jesus was sitting down with with sinners and those who were defiled by eating the wrong things and and not uh, going under the going through the prescribed manner of a uh, some kind of ceremony which they had with the hands and different things and, you know, water in their hands and different kind of things like that in order to, to do before they eat, eat which, uh, you know, uh, that is only, of course, washing up the hands and things like that is only for the purpose of washing them quickly and, and but to take away the, uh, the, the, the residue, the, uh, the, uh, culture that the bacteria can attach to and everything and so on like that but not for a particular ceremony that has to be done according because of a law that is written and that you become defiled because of not washing the hands not in the spiritual sense you know and so that was what he was trying to get at is let's let's look at the spiritual more than we do the physical and so then he said um Uh, there, uh, okay, all those things, and and there, and and these evil things come from within and defile the man, and from thence he arose and went un into the borders of Tyre and Sidon. And entered into an uh, house and would have no man know it, know it, but he could not be hid. They wouldn't let him be hid. They were, you know, after the healings and all that. For a servant woman whose uh, young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a uh, sorrow piece uh, and uh, he, uh, by nationality, and uh, also besought him that he uh, would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meat to care, take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And she uh, answered and said uh, unto him, Yes, Lord, but yet the dogs will get the crumbs. You know, so all that was was that he was just staying with the timeline for that period of that three year ministry was that we was going to take it to the Jews first, and then it would go to the Greek. You know, one place in Paul says, uh, uh, Paul says, uh, 
for I am committed to the gospel first to the Jews and then to the Greek. Uh, committed to preach the gospel first to the Jews and then to the Greek. It was a, a certain period of time uh, that it was to go only to the Jews, and then at the end of it, of course, that when he was re resurrected, when he was died on the cross and was resurrected from the dead, then it was go to go out to all the people of the world. And then you know because he said right there in Matthew twenty, you know twenty uh, uh, Matthew. Uh, 28 19 and 20 go ye therefore into all the world teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you baptizing men in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost for lo I, and then lo I am with you always even to the end of the world and so at that point you know after as he was leaving after he was resurrected and everything well then he reminded him okay I'm all power has been given to me on her heaven and earth and uh so go ye therefore, using this power which I'm passing on to you, to, into all nations, teaching them to observe all these things which I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and lo, I am with you always till the end of the end of the world. But for this one period of time, you know, he was explaining, I guess in that manner that would, would be understood at that particular time, that he had come to first deal with the Jews to see if he could get them to accept him as a Messiah. And of course, if the Jews had accepted him as the Messiah, it would have quickly reached all the rest of the part of the world anyway. And the millennium would have came in right then and everything else would have been taken care of. And But he had to, had to spend his time uh, wisely and most efficiently in order to attempt to get the Jewish people to accept him as the Messiah so then that the gospel could more quickly and more efficiently would go into the other, all parts of the world, and so that was the timeline. And then once he was, and once he was rejected by them, and they actually were the ones that decided to send him to the cross. And then he died upon that cross and was resurrected. Then it goes. Then it has come. Uh, he has turned the gospel to over, uh, turned it from them, and we extended it on out to the rest of the world uh, by that plan, which. By that new way, uh, by that, uh, the uh, by uh, coming to Apostle Paul like he did on the on the on the uh, road to Dam this Damascus and calling him to take it to all the other people in the world. So then it uh, it turns. Then uh, let's see what is the verse that says when the Jewish when the Jews reject it or something like that. Then it will go to the Greeks or something like that. It will go to the Gentiles. It goes. Uh, uh, it went first to the Jews, but then they said, well, the Jews haven't rejected it. Then it goes went to the Gentiles uh, without and stayed. Of course, stayed going to the Jews, but then it extended to the Gentiles at that point. And so, uh, but uh, the full attention on the Jews stopped at that point. Is what I'm saying. And so, uh, anyway, then uh, this says. Uh, he says, uh, okay, unto the uh, the dogs will eat the crumbs underneath the table uh, of the crumbs that come up on the, uh, under the table out of the children's crumbs. The dogs will eat that what the crumbs that the children drop as they do, you know, then the dogs will get that. And he said unto her, uh, for this sayings go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when the what, uh, she she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter, you know, was uh, laid uh, upon the bed. You know, resting, I guess. She found the devil going out, her daughter laying, resting quietly upon the bed. And again, despairing from the uh, coast of, you know, leaving there, departing the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis, and they bring unto him one that was de uh, de de deaf and had 
an impediment in his speech, and they beseeched him to put his hand upon him, and he took him aside from the, again, he you know, takes them apart from the multitude because of their lack of faith, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched uh, his tongue, and looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith unto him, it passed this, oh, let's see, uh, Ephesus, that is, be open. You know, that was the word for be open, Ephesus. And straight uh, away his ears were open, and the string of his tongue was loosened, and he spake plain. <laughs> yeah, that's an idea, you know. I, uh, I'll pray and I'll knot my tongue and my voice box and everything, and then I'll be able to sing better and speak better and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that gives me an idea, yes. Well, you know, I heard of that guy, you know, that that was a singer that, uh, or speaker, great, he was a speaker, a great speaker, you know, and uh, became a public speaker, and uh, he uh, he put rock, he put smooth pebbles, a whole bunch of smooth pe pebbles in his uh, in his mouth and, and made himself speak through those for a good long time, and then that improved his speech and made his voice better. And everything, you know, those kind of things, you can do things like that. You know, your breathing exercises and all the different kinds of things, you know. But, you know, you can anoint your tongue so that it doesn't get tongue-tied, maybe, if you get to, uh, tend to get tongue-tied. Or, or, you know, your voice box so that it makes, puts out a more beautiful sound. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and anoint everything in your throat and your lungs and everything to put out a more beautiful song. Oh, you know, and so uh, that's, that's a good idea, you know, that I never thought of it. So uh, I'm going to start praying for that, you know, that God will anoint me like that, you know. Uh, but <laughs> yes, sir, it's a, that's a, but anyway, so he was always healing people like that and He was always doing wonderful things like that for people. And so it's so marvelous to read about all this. And and I don't, uh, a lot of it I didn't remember and everything. And it makes me feel so good when I see it and read it. Uh, and they, uh, okay, they brought that man into him and he did that. And he, and, uh, and straight away his ears were open and the string was taken off of his uh, tongue and he, uh, changed, uh, he charged them that they should tell no man, but the more he charged them, so much more uh, a great uh, deal, they published it and were beyond measure astonished, saying, he had done all things well. Yeah, he had done all things well. That's in a verse, you know. Uh, that's in a verse of a, of a song. He doeth all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. You know, he heals both those things. He healed both those things at the same, right at one time. And uh, so he charged him not to tell no, no man. But, you know, sometimes you wonder whether he, he did that because he knew they would tell it some more, and he wanted it to be spread, or whether he actually was trying to get them to not spread it so rapidly so that he would have, there wouldn't be so many people that he wouldn't have time to get to them, or they wouldn't be, or they would be coming after him quicker, and he wouldn't be able to uh, live out the uh, timeline, the three-year timeline <coughs> that he had uh, that was for the purpose of that three-year ministry before he was crucified. And uh, so, uh, you know, it didn't want not to stir up too much of a uproar that would tend to start that envy and jealousy and everything. He tried to prevent that, tried all that envy and jealousy that among the high priest and, the you know, those that thought, you know, they were supposed to be the religious leaders and they forgot anything to say to come to them first. And so they were jealous and envious of anybody that was go out and say, God said this or, or, or I'm saying this. 
as the Son of God or anything, and because that goes went against their what they felt was that they're the only place, the place that they only had was to teach that and to tell that and to say what God intended. And so then now we're in verse uh, n- uh, chapter number eight, and uh, it says, uh, <coughs> "In uh, those days, the uh, multitude, being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and saith unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have, you know, nothing, have now become hungry or something like that, has nothing to eat. eat. And, uh, And uh, so uh, this is going to be the second time. This is when I think he, when he feeds the 4,000, maybe. He has one time when he fed 5,000 and another time when he when he fed the, uh, the 4,000. And uh, so this was, uh, so he said, uh, been, uh, with, uh, been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away uh, uh, fasting to their even to their own homes, they will faint by the way for diverse of uh, of uh, of them came from a long ways off, and so it's too far for them to be going back without stopping to eat first. Because, you know, you, the further you travel, the more, you know, you got to make sure you have the energy, to, enough food, to, you know, the energy uh, to uh, make the trip. You know, it takes energy to make a long trip like that. And so he said, well, we will, we will feed them. And his disciples answered uh, him from Whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. Yeah, the seven was with the four thousand. It was five. I don't know why that was. Five loaves and two fishes was this five thousand. But the seven, they had seven that time. And he commanded the uh, people, uh, you know, to sit down on the ground. And uh, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break it. And gave to his disciples to set before them and... Uh, they did set them before the uh, people. And they had a fear. Of, uh, they had a few uh, small fishes, and he uh, blessed uh, that, uh, them and came, uh, commanded to set them also before them. So they did eat and were filled, and they took up of the broken uh, pieces, the broken meat that was left, seven baskets left over. And they that had eaten were about 4,000, and he sent them away. Yeah, so... uh, There was, you know, seven loaves that he spread among 4,000 people. And then the other time earlier in the book of Mark, there, the third or fourth chapter there somewhere, he had spread five loaves among 5,000 people. One, one loaf per thousand. And this is seven loaves for, for 4,000. 
but it didn't make any difference because Jesus said, you know, even if it had just been one loaf, you know, he had a, a, more, a couple more to work with, you know, and a thousand pure people, but he could have done it either way, you know. So it just shows you that it doesn't matter about the numbers, that Jesus could do it either way, no matter how many he had to start with or how many people there were. Whatever the need was, in other words, Jesus could meet the need, whatever the need was. He was the bread of life. He could meet all needs. And uh, God can always supply all of our needs, no matter what they are or when, where we're at when we need them. Uh, how far out in the desert or how far we're out, out of the way when we need them, he can always supply it. Okay, so... Okay, so said uh, and uh, they that had eaten were about four thousand, and straight away he entered into a ship with his disciples and came into the parts of of, of Dalmatia. And uh, the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, uh, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. Oh, you know, you say, oh, you know, you say who you are. You're telling us you're this and that. Give us a sign from heaven and all that. And he, he uh, sighed deeply in his uh, spirit and said, why does this generation seek? After a sign, verily I say unto you, there shall be no sign given unto them, uh, uh, to this generation. And he left them and entered into the ship again and departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forsaken, uh, had forgotten to take bread. Uh, again, they forgot to take bread, neither had, or forgotten, they didn't even take seven that time. They had, um, that they were in the ship with them more than one loaf. I see, they had, a, they only had one loaf. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. They had one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. You know, and I guess they must have they must have sent all those those uh, fragments and everything and all those leftovers and everything, all those seven baskets that were left over and all of that, you know, of the bread and of the fishes, they must have sent those, uh, you know, home with the, uh, or, or off, yeah, home with the, uh, those people in the crowd, you know, give it to them to take home to their, you know, uh, people back there and everything like that. They didn't take any of it with them, uh, you know, uh, and so they didn't have but one loaf on with them in on the ship. And, uh, and so then uh, they were back in the same bind again. But then he saw an opportunity to teach them about, you know, the leaven of, uh, of how that the things that the Pharisees were doing was uh, uh, adding to, they were adding to the things which God had originally, just like we were saying, added to the Ten Commandments and put things in there that, that made the Ten Commandments of none effect. And the things that Herod was doing was making things of, you know, he was undoing the laws and different things like that. So he said, beware, and he was comparing leaven, uh, like, you know, a little leaven put into the loaf, you know, will leaven the whole loaf. It doesn't take a lot of leaven to do it. And so beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. The false teachings and the, uh, uh, and the uh, ways that they were, uh, the things that they were adding that were not what God gave them. And so he said, uh, uh, and they uh, reasoned among themselves, saying, 
it is because we have no bread. <laughs> and when Jesus knew it, he says unto them, Why reason ye because ye have no bread? Uh, perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Have ye you, 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 your hearts yet hardened? Having eyes see ye not, and having ears hear ye not, and and uh, do you not remember when I break the five loaves uh, among the five thousand, and how many uh, baskets uh, took uh, full of fragments took you up? They say unto him, twelve, twelve baskets, in it, and they took up more in the five thousand. You know, there was less going in, but more coming out. Twelve baskets, they say, and then twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets were took up? You up, and they said seven. <laughs> and he said unto them, how is it that ye do not understand? You know, twice, twice he turned all that bread into a, a little bit of bread into enough to feed but first five thousand and four thousand, he did that twice, and they still don't understand that he is able to provide all their needs. And he cometh to Beth Sadia, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. Woo, boy, this is an interesting lesson. This time he's doing all kinds of things, spreading that bread out, and uh, touching the deaf. He has already healed, see, healed the deaf man, and, and, and the, the man that had the speech impairment. Uh, uh, the deaf mute and all that, and uh, and cast and, and took uh, whatever that was that was wrong with that daughter. He healed that daughter, and she was laying, sleeping up on the bed, uh, uh, in her, uh, you know, just resting, and was completely healed. And uh, he did all those things, and and uh, now he's about to provide you know food for them on that ship, and uh, and then he's about to heal this blind man. Well, he did already provide that, and uh. I guess it passed on without mentioning it, uh, but uh, now he's going to heal this this blind man. Mm -mm -mm. Busy man. Oh yes, and then he had time to also teach all this. You know, really teach this uh, the lessons that he was teaching. Give the parable. You know, uh, give the parables uh, effective, efficient, effective parables to them. Teach them. Uh, uh, train them as his disciples, and then heal all these people, and all this kind of thing. He had time to, and also time to pray, spend long hours in prayer and fellowship with God, and he stayed busy. I'm sure. Okay, so it was uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, why are they? Uh, and he said unto them, you know, say no. Uh, and he cometh there to Bethsaida, and said, and they took up and they brought that blind man and led him uh, out of the uh, town. And when he had spit up on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. He saw if he saw anything, and he looked up and said. I see men as trees walking. You know, he was seeing, but it was blurred, you know, the way he couldn't tell, you know, whether it was men or trees almost. And so uh, probably knowing from the height of it and everything only, but it was fuzzy. And so he's saying, uh, he's saying he's seeing, but he's not seeing clearly. And after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and make uh, him look up and he was res uh, restored and made him look up hmm. and he was restored and saw every man clearly and he sent him away in his house saying neither go unto the town nor tell it to any in the town uh, and so we see how that, we wonder what uh, the significance of that was in verse 25 about, you know, first seeing the trees and then uh, seeing uh, the man and, and not be able to hardly distinguish who it was or whatever, you know, and then having to 
and then doing this other thing, you know, uh, and then he saw clearly. You know, of course, the idea is, he, well, he got it done, but uh, I wonder what's the significance of the two steps. And Jesus went out and his uh, disciples into the towns of And it might have been, that might have just been because it was taking him a little time to, you know, because, I mean, if you're blind, you know, and then your sight suddenly restored, it may take a little time to get it focused, you know, refocus. It may have just been giving him time to, you know, knowing it was going to take him time to focus. He had to take time to, to get the pupils, you know, just it had to adjust to the light and everything, get focused. And, you know, it takes a little time for that to happen. And so that might have been the significance of that. Uh, but. And so, it, uh, but the point was, he, I mean, he was completely healed of a blindness the first time there, you know, and then he just had to focus, you know, and he didn't know, he didn't realize he had to focus. And so he said, well, I see him, you know, but not quite plain enough yet. And you know, he said, and so, <laughs> he was telling Jesus, he said, no, I'm not going to be, I don't want halfway, I want you to get it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> but that was him. He was supposed to take a little time to focus, you know, and <laughs> give his eyes a little bit of time, you know, don't get in such a hurry. <laughs> he was in a hurry. He was in a hurry to see 2020 <laughs> very vision <laughs> or better. Oh, so he said, <laughs> uh, okay, he went into Caesarea Philippi, and by the way, he asked his disciples a uh, saying, unto them, whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others say one of the prophets, and he saith unto them, but when my, what, whom say ye that I am? And he said, and Peter answered him to him and said, thou art uh, Peter, uh, thou art the Christ. Yeah. Peter saith unto him, Thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they should tell no man of them. <laughs> he keeps telling them, don't say anything. And they keep telling And he besought, uh, he began to teach them uh, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and he uh, and be uh, rejected of the elders and of the chief priest uh, and the word scribes and he and be killed and after the three days uh, rise again. So see, he knew that was going to happen, you know, and he knew he knew, he knew that. Uh, and I'm glad I saw this here and reminded of that, you know. Uh, yeah, he he knew then that he was going to be uh, put upon that cross and. Uh, and uh, before it happens, you know, and he, so, it, you know, it wasn't like, I, I suppose some people would try to say, well, he didn't think he was going to, that they were going to actually hang him there, or he did, and he got caught in some way, manner or form, they would think that, maybe some people would be blind enough to think that, and everything, but actually he knew, and he, he told the disciples ahead of time, you know, that will happen, I will you know, will be killed. I will be put up on that cross. Will be crucified, and, and then I will rise again the third day. This temple will be raised again the third. That I will be rebuild the temple. So he foretold everything exactly as it was going going to happen, and so uh, it, uh, you know, and even sometimes people get uh, confused over those sayings of the cross and everything. Well, it tells you here again. It said he knew that he was going to be upon that cross until he died completely, you know, and, uh, uh, or, or, you know, the physical body died completely, and then the then he would rise again on that third day, uh, and he, he had told them ahead of time all of that that would happen, you know, and so that takes away any confusion anybody might have about anything if you just remember the things that Jesus said and how he told everything uh, uh, ahead of time and uh, exactly what was going to happen, you know. And so uh, then it says, uh, and he had called the people unto him with 
his disciples, saying to them, I will come after me. Okay, let's see. Did I get the rest of that? No. Oh, this is where Peter comes to him and, and he began to teach them that some of them may be rejected. Yeah, he said, I will be rejected. And uh, by the elders and the priests, chief, they would be the ones that did it, you know, and, and be killed. And three days later, it would rise again. And he spake that, uh, as he spake that saying openly, and Peter took him, you know, the guy, I guess put his hand on his shoulder or something, and took him and began to rebuke him. You know, no, that will not happen. He said, you can't do that. But when he had uh, turned a uh, about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou uh, savorest not the things of the uh, that be of God, but the things that be of of men. And so that has a good significance too, because he turned about to look on his disciples. He was teaching them a lesson there. And so that, you know, it wasn't, you know, so that kind of makes that clear, you know, where he's saying, get thee behind me, Satan. And he wasn't saying Peter was Satan and everything, but he was saying that he was telling the disciples, he said, this kind of attitude that he expressed there where he's not seeing the spiritual, he's looking only on the, he's looking for an earthly kingdom. They were looking for an earthly kingdom only, and that they were going to become the earthly kings and have all that material wealth and all that. That's what they were looking at. He's saying that kind of attitude was going, it was of the devil. And so, you know, he turned and looked at the, at, the, at the multitude, the crowd out there, the people that were listening to it, to point that out, that that would be Satan putting that thought into Peter's mind. And so he said, get thee behind me, Satan. I always thought of it as saying, Peter, you know, get thee behind me, Peter. But he was saying, saying get thee behind me, Satan, and stop bothering, you know, you stop telling Peter these things and so on like that. That's what, that's what he was actually saying. So that clears up certain things. Uh, and then we got to realize, too, that, you know, they were looking for that earthly kingdom, and he had not yet got to the point of explaining far enough that they could see and understand that the kingdom was going to come in after he was already dead on that cross and then he would have to rise again to bring in that kingdom and that was and they didn't understand that he they thought then they thought well they thought the minute that he got killed that he died you know that'd be the end of everything you know and there would be no one to become the king because he would be dead and they didn't realize that understand how that he would uh they didn't know how he would go about rising from the dead, you know, and that he was capable of rising from the dead or any of those kind of things. And so to them, you know, it was this life, you know, becoming an earthly king. And uh, so all those things were confusing them, and they had to grow spiritually, you know, to see all these things, just like all of us do. We have to grow spiritually to see more and more of the love of God, to understand, you know, like that song said, uh, who am I that he would die for, that a king would live and die for? Who am I? And uh, and uh, at the cross, the song at the cross and all, you know, who would, would die? Would he devote that sacred hip to such a worm as I, you know, uh, and a uh, vile as me and amazing grace and all those things that we have to understand the love of God is is uh, uh, that awesome pity, grace unknown and love beyond degree and grow into that to understand why he did all these things. And why he did it the way that he did it. And so then it says, uh, he rebuked uh, uh, Peter, uh, saying, uh, you know, but he was actually talking to the Satan that he was, that was uh, speaking to Peter. And when he had called the uh, people unto him with his disciples, he said unto them, uh, whosoever will come after me, uh, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his uh, li uh, life uh, shall 
lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Uh, what's, whosoever uh, therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him uh, also shall uh, the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes into his glory. So he said, uh, so that's where he's teaching him that, you know, come after me, uh, deny himself, take up his cross, you know, pay the price you got to pay and, and be willing to, uh, you know, lose yourself in that love for Jesus, to lose those things which you normally would uh, would take as being uh, those things which would fulfill you, the things of this life and everything, maybe having a lot of material things or all these kind of things like this, whatever would fulfill you in this life, doing certain things to fulfill you and, and, uh, and put instead, put first Jesus and the love of God as that which you know is going to give you the most fulfillment and the most reward and lose your life in that. Give up that time that you would spend on those other things and put it into serving God and in, and in uh, and, uh, teaching the gospel or witnessing or preaching the gospel. And everything. Do that with that time that you was going to spend on those other things. And so in a sense, then losing your life in to, to gain it. And uh, so you have to be willing to lose your your life, take up whatever uh, uh, price in being the cross or would be your cross at whatever price it would you would have to take up in order to do that. The sacrifice you'd have to make up time or whatever to do that, and then come and, and follow him. And then he said, um, "Whosoever," and then he then he gave that wonderful teaching about whosoever shall seek to gain his life shall lose it, and whosoever loses life for my sake shall gain it. And uh, Let's see, what else did he say about, about that, uh, about uh, something about heaven? Uh, let's see. He said, uh, whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's sake, the same shall save it for what shall it profit a man that he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And so then he said, you know, don't deny me. And, uh, and then in heaven, of course, he remember, coming when, God, when he cometh in his glory, uh, whosoever denies uh, me, I will deny him when I come in, when the Son of Man comes in glory of uh, uh, his Father uh, with all of his holy angels. And now this is chapter 9, chapter 9, verse 1. And he said unto them, Verily, some of them that stand here uh, there are some that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power and of course that's uh, referring to the res he's going to re uh, rise from the dead and uh, the, the kingdom will start being proclaimed and start going out into all the world and they're going to see that happen start happening you know, we did, we did just a few months, you know, a few weeks or a few months from right then when he's talking that he's going to be dying on the, on the cross. And, uh, or let's see, what time period is this? Let's see, this is chapter. Yeah, I would expect it was maybe only about a year away or less, maybe. Uh, and because uh, he's already been preaching now for, I guess, a year or two already. And, uh, and uh, so he said, uh, and uh, he says, and said unto Peter, says unto him, Peter and James. Okay, he took with him, then he took with him Peter, James, and John, and the, oh, this is that wonderful verse, and leadeth them to up into a high mountain. Yeah, that's, uh, 
uh, where it says, uh, uh, yeah, verse nine, uh, Mark 9 and verse 3 about the transfiguration. Take it up in a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured uh, before them. Mark 9, 2 is, yeah, Mark 9, 2 and 3. And his raiment became, uh, became a uh, shiny, shiny, uh, in a exceedingly white as snow. So as, and his uh, raiment was white as snow, as so as to look is just like the puller on earth can w white them, such as no puller, or so, so, uh, as no puller on earth can whiten them. Yeah, so, yeah, that's uh, uh, verse 2, 9 and 2 in Mark, and in Matthew it's, it is uh, 17 and 2, 2 and 17, 2 and 3, and, seven, and, uh, uh, and, and 9, and in Mark 9 and 2, both of them, uh, both places it's verse 2, it's verse 2 in both places where he was transfigured, you know. Uh, in both places, nine, uh, seventeen two and nine and two. That's those are the two places in the New Testament where that transfiguration is mentioned. And uh, let's see. Uh, well, yeah, it's also mentioned in. Uh, I believe in. It's not mentioned in Saint John. It's also mentioned in uh, nine. I believe it's nine in also in in Luke chapter nine. Uh, uh, also. And so, anyway, so 9 and 2 and 17, too. Mark 9 and 2 and then uh, Matthew 17, too, the transfiguration. And so, uh, uh, let me see. And so, we will need to stop and pray here pretty soon. Uh, and uh, everything, and keep everything on time. And said, okay, it said, and his raiment became uh, exceedingly white uh, as the snow. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and and they uh, were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said unto them, G uh, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make there uh, three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he was uh, wist not what to say. For they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that came overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had uh, looked around about, they saw no man save Jesus only, and uh, with themselves. And as they came down from that mountain, he charged them that they uh, 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 they should tell no man again, you know, that these things had happened and until the Son of Man was risen from the dead. You know, so they're again predicting the rising from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, uh, questioning uh, one uh, with another what this uh, uh, rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, you know, uh, so forth and and so we will stop there and pray. Uh, we, we will stop there and pray. And so we can keep that on time. And so they came down for the mountain, you know, and, uh, uh, and let's see if it says where they went. And they came down for the mountain. Let's see. But the... Uh, Okay, so I didn't have it like it did on there. Okay, so we will stop here and pray and ask God's blessing upon the reading of the scripture. We'll stop here at about uh, 154. We will begin the prayer there about 153.30. And so, Father, I pray that you'd bless the reading of this word, uh, Father, to our hearts and bless us, dear Father, and, and, uh, Bring, uh, cause it to be uh, opened uh, to us clearly to where we can understand all the things that were said. And Lord, just enlighten our hearts with all this wonderful reading of thy word now. And Father, I just pray that you would uh, cause us to uh, 
uh, have a greater appreciation of thy word and a greater understanding of the light that is shown there. And Father, I just pray now that, uh, Father, that you would uh, uh, cause us, dear, dear God, to turn uh, uh, more unto thee because of the reading of the word. And Lord, I Father, just bless it and continue to bless us in this study of, of the book of Mark and the, all the gospels and in our in our exposition of the New Testament. All. And Father, just go, uh, just bless us and uh, in this study, as we go, keep going further on, uh, that you will give us more and more understanding. And Lord, Father, I just pray now that you'd bless all of those that are sick, dear Father, and all of those, dear Father, dear, dear Jesus, that that have uh, any kind of a any kind of heartache, any kind of sorrow, any kind of depression, any kind of other other uh, feeling of lowness or blues or anything like that. Lord, that you just lift them above all those things, and Lord, just cause them to be lifted, you know, above any kind of a of that. Uh, uh, midnight of sorrow or midnight of pain or any kind of a, uh, any kind of darkness at all, dear God, that you would just lift him above that and let and open that uh, let that sunshine of thy light shine upon him now and let it all shine let that sunshine shine in our heart and upon our faces and give us more love and strength and give us a greater evangelistic spirit and a greater love for the lost. So now I pray, dear God, if there may be anyone sick with any kind of thing such as cancer or other uh, yeah, other type of uh, of a uh, of an incurable or dangerous disease, dear, dear God, that you would just heal them, dear God, of any kind of interminable, any kind of, any kind of a terminal illness or any kind of, of so-called incurable illness or any kind of cancer at all of any kind of cancer, any kind of metastatic formation, and Lord, that you would heal people, especially of any kind of tumor that attaches and grows upon their body anywhere, and especially if it grows and within that cranial cavity, Lord, that precious cranial cavity, which is reserved for the brain, and all in the brain, and takes care and maintains, and Lord, that dear God, that you would just remove that, that you would just cause it, dear God, to depart from their mind, and from the, uh, would depart from their, uh, from their cranial cavity, uh, if it's a uh, whether it's in the brain, on the brain, or or, 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 or in, in the brain, or upon the brain, or inside the cranial cavity, anywhere, Lord, that you just touch that and remove that tumor from them now in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. And heal any after effects, heal any kind of effects of, of that, and remove it totally down to the uh, quantum level. Remove it totally where there will be not a vestige of it left. And Lord, we just pray now. I pray in the name of our Holy Son, Jesus, Lord, that you just bless people that have any kind of nervous disorder, any kind of uh, electrical storms like epilepsy or, or uh, uh, occurring in their brain or any kind of failure of the synapses to work correctly or, Lord, any kind of a memory loss. You bless people that have uh, heal them of any kind of memory loss or any kind of disease such as Alzheimer's. Dear God, that you just restore their total uh, use of their mind and their brain. You re re restore the total use of that brain, uh, Lord, uh, in every way, uh, to total 100% usage and memory return. And Lord, dear God, I just pray you'd heal them there of all signs of every kind. And Lord, heal them of any kind of loss of the proper blood flow or the oxygenation of the blood that would cause any kind of TIA or any kind of stroke of any kind, any kind of loss of a proper uh, uh, oxygen in the brain or, uh, or loss of proper circulation of the blood in any form or fashion. And Lord, now we just pray, Lord, that you would protect people, protect their brain, protect their everything in their cranial cavity. And Lord, now we pray, dear God, Lord, that you just touch people and protect their spinal cord. And Lord, just heal them of any kind of uh, any kind of a uh, miss uh, curvature of the spine, anything causing any kind of pain or any kind of uh, problem with the disc or the vertebrae or any kind of pinched nerve. Lord, heal them of any kind of sciatic nerve pain. And, pro uh, and Father, we just pray, dear, dear, dear Jesus, uh, that you would heal people of any kind of a, any kind of a shingles, dear God, or any kind of a, uh, allergy of any kind and lord that you would heal them dear father of of any kind of a uh of, of a, a spinal meningitis or multiple sclerosis or any kind of a non-hoskins lymphoma or lymphoma of any kind or heal them of any kind of lupus or any defects of lupus dear god just heal them of those kind of diseases and heal them of all the scabies and rashes and skin disorders of every kind some of those disorders that uh, in the skin that comes with, with a lot of the refugees or or migrants and everything lord that you would heal them of all those things and lord just cause those things uh, to move out and depart from their skin and cause them to have the perfect 
trouble skin like it should have. And Lord, I pray that I just pray, dear Father, that you would bless, bless people and you would heal them, dear God, of any kind of a, a heart problem, dear God, that you would just cause them to be the muscle of their heart to be strengthened. Father, I pray you give them a good, strong heart in every kind of in every way, dear God, uh, and Lord, that you cause uh, uh, the uh, electrical functioning of the brain to be. Uh, harmonious in every way and function down all right on time. No need of any kind of a, a pacemaker or anything, but that the pace would be perfect. The electrical firing would be perfect. Everything would work perfect, Lord, and all the blood flow. Lord, that you just relieve them. And Lord, uh, of any kind of plaque upon any kind of the blood vessels uh, to the heart or any of the coronary vessels especially. And Lord, dear God, just remove anything getting in the way of the blood flow. And Lord, cause a perfect blood flow and a perfect heart muscle and a perfect but uh, ticking of their ticker uh, for many, many years. And Lord, just re relieve them of any kind of thing like that with the heart and lord their god i just pray oh my dear father that you just bless people that they will have a perfect functioning of their lungs oh dear god father i just pray that you just cause it all or any kind of emphysema or copd or any kind of a uh, of a uh, allergy or asthma or bronchitis or any kind of a effect that would be caused from any kind of bacterial infection or any kind of a uh, any kind of viral infection or any just take away all viruses and all, all of those co anything from COVID-19 to any other kind of viruses Lord you relieve them of that and cause it and it's all in the name of Jesus depart from them depart from them any kind of viruses Lord it will affect the lungs and cause a breath problem with the breathing and lord their god lord did you just heal them, them of any kind of effects of any kind of uh, lord that you'd heal them of the craving for nicotine or any kind of thing lord that they would be uh, smoking or causing uh, the uh, ill effects of their lungs and causing a failure, dear God, uh, uh, of the lungs and causing a failure, dear God, for uh, 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 a more uh, difficult for the for the oxygen to be provided to all of the organs of the body and so forth. And lord their god now we pray that you would just cause them Dear God, to lay down those cigarettes and never turn back, never come back, and never be able to, come, never have a need or feel a need to come back to them. You heal totally that addiction so that those lungs can be restored and you can restore all of those damage that they, all of that damage caused by smoking now in the name of the, the Holy Spirit. They to totally restore, restore all that damage. And Lord, restore all the damage caused in the liver by alcohol. Lord, if they be able to lay that bottle down and never come back to it, and all that cirrhosis of the liver, dear God, that you can you can somehow restore that liver, Lord, to perfect working order. And Lord, of any kind of hepatitis, that you heal hepatitis, you heal cirrhosis, you cause them to walk off in the bottle and never come back. And Lord, that that liver may be restored to Joel 225, that that will restore the years the locusts have eaten, those years that they've spent drinking and everything, Lord, of smoking or anything else, that you can restore that. And Father, dear God, I just pray in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus, that you would just heal people of all depression. Oh, Father, just touch them. Dear God, and lift them above any kind of depression, any kind of blues, any kind of low feeling, any kind of in the ballot feeling, any kind of uh, feeling of being left out or being isolated or anything else like that, Lord, or any kind of feeling of, uh, of being obsessed by either a peer group or, or relationships or, or relatives or or government, uh, 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 government situations or uh, political situations or public situations of any kind, dear God. Lord, that they would feel uh, the, uh, the victory that you have over all of those things and be lifted above any kind of depression, obsession uh, uh, with this life or any kind of obsession with bad habits, any kind of, any kind of depression or obsession or uh, oppression. Dear God, that they would be lifted up to thy high mountain of joy and they would be see clearly across all of that and to that victory which you give us that we have overcome through Jesus and that we have victory through him. And Lord, dear God, I just pray that you would heal people of all of their uh, uh, of their uh, bone problems, dear God, of any kind of bone cancer, of any kind of a, uh, osteoporosis, dear God, it would cause brittleness of the bone, that you would just give them good strong bones with no brittleness and no osteoporosis at all, and Lord, dear God, heal them of all their joint pain and all their joint problems, dear God, that there would be no uh, you heal them of arthritic pain and all of rheumatoid arthritis any kind of joint pain or joint problem and Lord, they heal them of any kind of knee problem, and the, the hinging of the knee or the synovial fluid or any kind of a, a problem with the, with the uh, 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 functioning 
of the hip joints. And if there's any fissure or any fracture, uh, fracture, uh, fracture in the hip, Lord, that you would just uh, seal that back together and cause them to have good, strong bones, Lord, and, and a good, strong joints that they might dance in the spirit, dear Father, and dance upon thy holy ground and, and can call it and realize what it is and realize that they're standing upon the holy ground that they may jump and shout in the spirit Lord, with a good, strong structure to stand upon and shout upon, that they may shout, shout, shout all these things out. These are because these are the things that we can do without all these diseases we can do without. That they would, they would shout, 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 and shout them all out. Uh, and Lord, dear God, now that you would just heal people, and uh, that they could get up out of all, and that they would uh, throw away those. Uh, <coughs> Those crutches, you know, pitch those crutches at the devil and chase him out of their home, chase him out of the church, chase him out of the building. Lord, he made and, and, uh, uh, Lord, that they would be able to get up out of those wheelchairs and run and dance and jump in the Holy Spirit and chase the devil out. Send the wheelchair after the devil. Tell him that he, that he can use it. Oh, dear God, and then take it to where he And Lord, just take out all of that ever need and never bring back any wheelchairs or any crutches again. I'll never have to have them again. They'd be perfectly healed. And they can jump in the Spirit and dance in the Spirit, Father. Oh, dear God, it's Take the shackles from their feet that they may dance. They may dance gradually up in that spirit of God that they may be able to rejoice and shout and dance. Oh, dear God, now we pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Now, Father, I just pray, dear God, that you would just touch me. People with diabetes of any kind and heal them of every kind of hormonal disorder or any any kind of imbalance in their blood sugar. Lord, give them a perfect balance in their blood sugar. Oh, dear God, and perfect balance in their hormones and give them a perfect a perfect output and functioning of the pancreal system and perfect functioning output of the kidney system and all the other organs of the body and give them a good strong heart and everything and anything. Oh, Lord, affected, dear God, by diabetes diabetes effects that you would take them away. And Lord, dear God, heal them perfectly of all diabetes. Any and all forms of diabetes will be healed now in the name of the Holy Holy Son Jesus, in the name of the Holy Son Jesus, Lord, heal all that, heal all lung disorders, all cancer, all, all dear God, all uh, liver disease, uh, uh, malfunctions, and all dear God of all the heart disease and all uh, cranial uh, disorders in the cranial cavity, Lord, any kind of tumor and all those kinds of things, dear God, to be healed up now in the name of our Holy Son Jesus. And Lord, now we pray, Father, that you would bless all of the leaders of our nation. Dear God, that you would just touch them with a, a ability. To have and draw upon the wisdom and understanding, dear God, that they could understand the value of character and integrity and honesty and transparency, oh, and forthrightness and dealing everything be dealt above board and everything with honesty. And Lord, that they would understand the value of that and what that does to preserve the country, what that does to preserve our freedom and liberties. And how that all applies and how them being a, a, a person that can be emulated by those that come after them. Lord, that they can be emulated because of their character and their honesty and their integrity and how valuable that is to preserving our nation. That they would suddenly understand that and realize that they have got to exercise character and honesty and integrity so that those coming after them can emulate a, that and, and hold that up as being the right way and to hold that up so that it's to strengthen the nation that it may go forward in the future, a strong nation based on righteous principles, based on the Judeo-Christian principles with Jesus Christ as, the chief corner, as, the, as Jesus Christ as that cornerstone of that building. And, oh, Father, I pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that, that all of our leaders would, would uh, be grateful for all of the people of character and integrity and honesty that have gone on before, all those people that have shed their blood before to buy the liberty and freedom of this country, they would understand why those people were willing to shed their blood, why they were willing to die for this country in order to achieve a country that has freedom and liberty. And what about their character and their integrity and their honesty and everything caused them to be able to do that and how that built a, a strong foundation for the country to grow upon and, and lift up that that they would understand that they've got to lift up that to the current generation and the future generations. And oh, Father, I just pray, dear God, that you just touch them with that understanding. And Lord, dear God, let them know, uh, realize how valuable is the foundation which this country was built on and how we have to maintain that. And uh, any other foundation we built on uh, will not, the country uh, will not strengthen the country like it needs to, uh, or maintain this country and maintain its freedoms and its liberties. 
And, we, and Lord, dear God, may they understand why we have to have a country built on freedoms and liberties and how that goes about creating a greater, uh, more, much more prosperity for more people concerned and creates a greater productivity and everything else. Oh, greater incentive, greater invention, and all the things that goes into to making for a, a, a strong society that can fight against their enemies. And all those kinds of things that happen because of being built upon a strong foundation that we have to maintain. Uh, Lord, I, I just pray that all of our professors and teachers in our universities and all of our public school and private school teachers, uh, Lord, that they would understand that they have to create a care, that they have to uh, learn to uh, seek for and understand and, and, uh, encompass about themselves a character and an integrity that will can be emulated by those which are under their tutelage those which are under their influence that they have to just dis- they have to have character and integrity and they have to teach an appreciation for those who have gone before that had character and integrity and honesty and all of that has to be a major part of their teaching and the major part of of what they do as teachers and professors and Lord, may they understand that. And my, my, my Lord, may they understand uh, how, what it actually takes to maintain our freedoms and liberties and, how, and what they were actually built upon and how they are in the place that they're in for, so that they can uh, uh, cause those things to be uh, uh, be appreciated for them. And they will give them the motivation to cause an appreciation for those who have died for this country and spilt their blood and died uh, that we may maintain liberties and freedoms. Oh, Lord, and not, that we may not just uh, try suddenly change uh, off of that and uh, no longer appreciate what has been done and no longer appreciate our foundations, not worrying about the way that that was good, what that's going to cause. Oh, Lord, that they would have appreciation for our country and its greatness and what is going to maintain it. And Lord, now, Father, I just pray in the name of the Holy Spirit, you should bless all of our government leaders, all of our congressmen, oh, dear God, and all of our, our, our state, all of our state and uh, and county of uh, state, city, and county leaders uh, across this country would understand that every position from the big, lowest to the highest but in, in any kind of public position it gives them the opportunity to uh, this to uh, cause those uh, that they gives them a place of influence where they have the responsibility and the God-given duty to maintain character and integrity and honesty and forthrightness and transparency so that those people that they uh, uh, under their influence were uh, ever ever so slight their influence might be those that are under their influence may see that character and integrity displayed and that appreciation for the freedoms and liberties of this country we all have a job to do you know uh, we all have a job to do to maintain freedom and liberty and we can't just willy-nilly just for political reasons do things. We have to consider the future of our country and have a vision for this country. Uh, without a vision, the people perish. All oh, Father, just teach them that. Teach everyone those things. And Lord, Father, in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus, now we just bless, pray that you bless our police officers. Lord, dear God, dear God, in this country, just protect them against any violence or any aggression or anything that will cause harm to themselves or their family. Oh, dear God, that they might be make it home safely every night to be with their family. And Lord, that they may make the end of their career, may come to the end of their career with a great sense of reward of, of having done a good job, a great sense of, of a worthy character and a great sense of having a, of accomplishment for everything that they've done to help to maintain freedom and li- liber- the freedom and liberties of this country and ha- by, by uh, helping to preserve law and order. Uh, Lord, uh, how that we have to have that law in order to preserve freedom and liberties. And we need people need to be awake to that, uh, to understand what that has to do with maintaining freedoms and liberty, freedom and liberty. And Lord, I God, that they would have that uh, that reward. And Lord, just bless them and keep them and protect them in every way. Protect all of our police officers in every way and everything that they do. And Lord, now we pray, dear God, that you just protect all of our military people. Lord, uh, all of our men and women in the Air Force, the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, the, the Space Force, all, all of them that would be protected and everywhere they go in the world and everywhere they are. And, the, and, and Lord, that you would just protect them against any kind of undue aggression, any kind of thing that would harm themselves or their families, that they might be able to serve well. They might be able to come to the end of their tour uh, without any undue harm to themselves or their family. And Lord, that they would have uh, no, no, no permanent injuries of any kind. And Lord, their God, that they would enjoy their tour and they would learn from it and they express a and develop a character and an honesty and integrity. And Lord, now just pray 
that she would protect them. They, those are career soldiers. They make it to the end of their uh, their years or whatever, 20 or 30 years or whatever, the end of their particular time of their career that they decide and, and serve out. If they make it to the end of that time, dear God, by uh, without harm to themselves and their family and look back upon that and see it as they uh, did serve well, served honorably and done a whole lot for to help to maintain the freedoms and liberties of this country as they may be greatly rewarded in their heart uh, for that and greatly respected by the people of this country for that time of service. And just protect them like that in every way from any kind of new aggression. And Lord, now we pray, dear God, that you just protect all of our pastors and all the leaders of our churches. Mm -mm -mm. Lord, dear God, that they would have a great evangelistic spirit. All of our pastors and our assistant pastors, our associate pastors, all of our youth pastors and, and, and youth leaders and youth directors, and all of our music pastors and music directors, Lord, choir directors, dear God, and choir members, and all of our Sunday school teachers of every kind, Lord, all of our elders and our deacons and our prayer warriors and all the rest of them in the church that are working hard for the church, the Christian workers, Lord, dear God, that are working that they may have a great evangelistic spirit, a greater love for soul, and pull together to bring in a great evangelistic spirit and a great revival spirit that they would have a passion for have bring in revival and work together to bring it in. They have the wisdom. Give them all of them, a all of our, the church leaders, a a a uh, greater evangelistic drive and spirit and a greater love for the lost. Uh, oh, dear God, that uh, you just pray for them now that you just protect them in that and give them wisdom. Give them a greater wisdom to teach. Give them a wisdom to teach and preach and, and bring the gospel forward and bring the today teachings that need to be done. All of those teachers and all and all the preachers and all the sociopaths. And Lord, I may pray, dear God, now that you to protect all of our ranchers and all of our farmers. Lord, dear Father, in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus. Father, that you would bless every one of us. Those that, oh, even those that are involved in the industry, anything, those that are providing for this country, providing our food and our good and our services. And Lord, that you would protect the ranchers, especially the ranchers down south, against the undue encroachment upon their property and, uh, and then as, uh, protect them against vandalism of their barns or of their equipment or of their houses. Or the, oh, dear God, that, that you would just cause that, protect them. Oh, Father, uh, all of their livestock, all of their cows and their horses and their other livestock against uh, any kind of pest or any kind of diseases or any kind of destruction caused by vandalism or anything like that. And he would cause them to have a great reward and have a great uh, for the work that they're doing and come to the uh, time, oh, dear God, that they would have the right prices and the right, and then you would prosper them in every way and every form and in their fashion, cause them to turn to God and use a prayer and pray for protection. Oh, dear God, and everything so that their farms and their ranches will be protected. Lord, protect them, dear God, in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, and Lord, provide them a great uh, uh, productive ability and a great uh, uh, prosperity. And then, and Lord, for our farmers, dear God, that you would give them a great harvest when the prices be right and they'll have a great prosperity a great profit and, and a great ability to maintain their farms and their equipment and Lord dear God give them a great prayer life and a great give them time to produce and also have time for the Lord and Lord dear God that you to protect them against vandalism and any kind of any of their equipment again protect all of their farm animals all their horses and cows and sheep and goat and other, other animals that they have uh, hogs and all dear God against any kind of pest or any kind of disease or any kind of vandalism dear God protect everything against that vandalism dear God in the name of our Holy Son Jesus Prosper them in every way, we pray. Oh, Father, I pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. And now we pray, dear God, that you'd we pray for our missionaries on any farm field, wherever they are in this world, dear God, that you'd protect them against harm, against undue persecution. And Lord, give them the ability to, to uh, uh, set forth great works of the gospel and be a great lighthouse and win many souls. Give them a great evangelist spirit, a great love for the law. Oh, dear God, let them give a greater love for God. Every in every way, and protect them, them and their families from all harm. Protect them from harm to themselves and their families. And Lord, that they may make it the end of their time. Uh, oh dear God, to, back to where their home, uh, their uh, original home. And Lord, uh, with a great reward for a service well done for the gospel and for the world. And Lord, dear God, that they uh, uh, would come back uh, if they serve. Uh, uh, the, their entire life that they would see such a reward and such an increase and such a harvest. Oh, dear God, they would give them great reward both now and in heaven. And Lord, dear God, just bless them in every way and protect them from harm in every way and provide them with all of the wherewithal. And provide them, dear God, with the support that they need. Dear God, the help that they need, the drive they need, oh, and, the, and the love they need and everything, Lord. We pray in the name of our Holy Son, Jesus. And Lord, now we pray. 
Dear Father, dear God, oh, oh this, uh, oh, once again, touch every, all of these leaders in every form of passion that they would understand the value of character and integrity uh, and honesty and forthrightness and transparency. And Lord, if they would be out of character, they would, they would seek and pray for every day to have a character that could be emulated, emulated by the, this generation and the next generations coming up. And Lord, dear God, protect this country. Oh, dear God, in every way. And now we pray, dear God, for all of our pets. Oh, Father, dear God, I just pray. Oh, dear Jesus, that you would uh, cause a, a, a great protection to be upon all of our pets. Dear God, protect them from any kind of attack by wild animals, protect them from any kind of disease. Dear God, and protect them, dear God, from uh, from uh, uh, any kind of loss of a uh, uh, of anything, Lord. That they would have the supply chains would would uh, work perfectly to provide them food and all of that for our, all of our pets and all the livestock and everything else. And dear God, dear God, that you just protect them against the smaller ones from being attacked by the larger ones. And Lord, dear God, just cause them to enjoy their homes and everything. And Lord, have a uh, good atmosphere that they can enjoy always. And Lord, if there be any homeless animals, dear God. Oh, Father, that you would just give them a heavenly home, give them a forever home, a forever home with a heavenly atmosphere and a home where there is a loving people to take care of them. And the Lord, that they would have a place where they can enjoy and they can have sufficient room and Lord, to have sufficient food, have good, wholesome food, a good, enjoyable, wonderful food, lots of good food that be well served and uh, well uh, satisfied with that food and taken care of and stayed healthy and protect them from any kind of disease or anything. Just bless all of our homeless animals to find forever home. We pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. And now, Father, we just pray that you would protect all of us, dear God, against any kind of disease or any kind of infection or any kind of pest or anything like that, of anything to harm us or any kind of thing like that. Protect us from harm of all kinds and keep us safe and in peace. Keep us safe from the storm and keep us safe from uh, both the storm spirits and the storms that and of the, uh, that happen uh, physically in the way of hurricanes, tornadoes, and, and uh, the thunderstorm uh, storms that with high wind, with hail, and all the other kinds of things. Protect us from all that. Lord, any kind of disaster, so oh, dear God, I pray, pray, dear God, that you just give us peace and happiness in every way. Cause us to be weary, free, Lord. Cause us to trust in Thee, and Lord, Father, we just give us a good afternoon and a good evening, Lord, and a good night's rest tonight. And we, we may be enjoy all oh, the word that we have uh, with our Bibles and we will enjoy our prayer life and our prayer time. Give us a good prayer time. Oh, Lord God, that we may have a great enjoy because of what we studied and read in the Bible and because of the prayer that we do. And Lord, just give us a good, uh, peaceful night's rest tonight that you may restore us and may uh, to all vim and vigor, Lord, to, to work strongly for thee tomorrow with great energy and vim and vigor and love for the lost. And now we pray, dear God, that you just bless anybody that has to, that has any kind of illness or sickness or, or, or a cold or even the cold or flu or anything else, Lord, or any kind of, uh, any kind of a, a severe disease. Lord, that you just heal them now in the name of Jesus and bless anybody, especially with any kind of metastatic formation or cancer. Lord, or any kind of diabetes, lung disorder, or heart disorder. Lord, so liver problems, dear God, oh, dear God, they probably just bless them and heal them in every way. Lord, just bless those especially that have tumors anywhere in their body, any kind of lymphoma. Lord, dear God, our tumor, dear God, especially the tumors that are underneath their cranial cavity, they're already upon the brain, in the brain, or around the brain. Dear God, that you just remove that and cause it to depart now in the name of the Holy Son Jesus and never come back again and never bother them again. And all these things that we can do without, they would be able to shout, shout, shout them all out and they'd be gone and it would depart in the name of Jesus. We pray and now we pray for the Lord bless us and keep us the remainder of the afternoon and evening. Give us a wonderful evening. Give us a good time uh, with our prayer in the Bible study. We pray and ask all these things and a good night's rest. Lord, we pray and ask all these things in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God.